and uh, welcome to uh, the take home messages for uh, kidney cancer on our uh, EAU23. My name is uh, Carmen Mir, and I am the chief editor of the renal cancer part of the Euro Oncology platform. Um, I work in uh, Valencia, Spain, and I'm here to remind you about what's best from today's uh, uh, meeting. So a couple of things have been highlighted in our meeting. Um, in Twitter, there has been a lot of controversy on the game changers for this year. Two game changers have been presented. One is the OPERA study that was already discussed last year that it compares the outcomes of open versus uh, robotic partial nephrectomy. This year, what we got out of it was the quality of life outcomes. We could see that results were a little better for uh, robot-assisted uh, partial nephrectomy, however, not as good as expected. In terms of diagnostic tests, we had another game changer, that is the Jargon trial, that looks into finding some answers on how to diagnose primary uh, renal masses. Uh, without a biopsy. What it uses is uh, an antibody that is called genentuximab that binds uh, CA9, and uh, it tells us when there is a clear cell renal mass. Uh, this is an example of how the, how the CT looks like on, uh, on real life with a case, and what the authors found was that the, the study fulfilled its primary endpoint sensitivity and specificity uh, with negative predictive value 25%, 75%, sorry. So what we can conclude of this study is that the test is pretty good at telling us basically if uh, the, um, the tumor is actually malignant. Uh, however, when the, the test is negative, uh, we hesitate about what should we do. Still, it's, uh, the results are equivocal, so we need a little bit longer follow-up. And uh, we have some answers that are, we are expecting, such as uh, any answers in terms of cost-effectiveness and uh, long-term outcomes on how it has changed our practice. In terms of the three best options that we have selected, uh, one was about BHL patients from Milan, and it aimed to determine the relationship between BHL pathogenic variants and clinical phenotype. A uh, total of 65% of the patients had a missense mutation, and what we saw as a primary endpoint is that the number of sites involved in 50% of the cases was two or less. The authors conclude that if you have a missense mutation, you have a tendency to have more sites involved in your BHL disease and more aggressive disease. In terms of uh, the second abstract that we want to highlight is on um, adult patients with MIT family translocation renal cell carcinoma, and the authors aimed to actually risk stratify these patients and find some clinical strategies. This is a total of 107 patients included, and they were determined by fee staining over 45% positivity. So there were two populations, localized and metastatic, and what we can see is that patients in localized RCC had uh, prognostic factors of PT3 and PT4, PN+, plus, and positivity on fish, if they had at least two factors, their disease-free survival at five years would be 37%. So that would be an advocate to think about in this patient with the MIT family translocation to think about adjuvant. The third action that has been highlighted over this meeting is about the micronodular spread in non-metastatic clear cell RCC and the impact in, in terms of uh, genomic background. Uh, the authors look at over 300 patients with localized RCC, and the primary endpoint in this case was a renal recurrence-free survival. Uh, actually, 20% of the patients record. And what they found is that the shorter the, the recurrence-free survival was in patients with T3E, uh, Furman 3 or 4, and micronodular invasion. So it, this, this factor seems to be make a difference in uh, terms of recurrence, as we can see, 38% versus 95% at two years. Also, when they look at the 51 samples that had genomics uh, done, they could see that uh, SETD mutation, one of them was present in 28% of the cases if they were positive for the micronodular spread. That mean, meaning that probably there is a higher rate of tumor murder mutation burden that those patients would benefit from adjuvant immunotherapy in the future. 